Hi everyone. Welcome to the webinar, Want to Increase Your Funding for Your Nonprofit? Start by Increasing Your Transparency. My name is Jenny Taylor and I'm the Community Manager here at GuideStar. A few housekeeping items before we begin. First, we're going to be live tweeting during today's presentation using the hashtag NPO Transparency. So please join the conversation on Twitter. Secondly, we are happy to take questions from you all during the presentation. While the Q&A session will be at the end of the presentation, you are more than welcome to submit questions at any time. To submit a question, you can use the Q&A box at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. And finally, we will send all of you an email with a link to the presentation and today's recording in a few days. I'm now happy to introduce our amazing panel for today, joining us from across the country. Our first presenter, Jasmine Morrow, is the Director of Nonprofit Strategy here at GuideStar. She has a Master's of Public Policy from Mills College in Oakland, California. Jasmine came to GuideStar with over 10 years of experience with nonprofits in California and serves on the board of California Food Policy Advocates. Next up, we have Dolores Estrada. She is the Manager of Grants Administration at the California Endowment. Dolores joined the California Endowment in 1999 and currently oversees the administrative functions and policies of the Foundation's online grant making process. Utilizing GuideStar has helped the California Endowment's grant making workflow and has significantly helped reduce the turnaround time from intake to award process from 120 days to under 55 days. Next, we have Linda Oatley. She is the Director of Partner Services Team that vets and monitors grants to all new organizations for global giving. She brings more than 15 years experience in grants management and engagement with governments and citizen groups to promote good governance and international development. When Global Giving redesigned their application and included the GuideStar API, the amount of time it takes for U.S.-based organizations to complete and submit the full application was reduced from an average of 67.7 days to an average of 9.9 days. And our final presenter today, Darren Nordhagen, is a co-founder and president of Foundant Technologies. Foundant software is used by over 800 grant-making organizations around the world to help manage grant activity. Darren has spent his entire career with high-tech startups and has held sales leadership roles for several computer software and hardware companies. Welcome, everyone. We are super excited to have you with us today. Jasmine, the floor is all yours. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for uh, joining us. Um, so, as Jenny mentioned, we've got some great speakers today who are going to be talking about um, using transparency and particularly the GuideStar profile to help with the funding process. So I want to kick things off by talking about the profile directly. Um, so I want to talk about what that is, why it's important, and how you can keep it current and robust. So. First, I'll just start. Before I go there, I'll, I'll begin at the beginning. This document is likely familiar to most of us. This is the Form 990. It's the information that we use as nonprofits to file our, our tax information. So um, it's the predominant way that we convey our complex information to the world, uh, and it's through our tax information. So it's the financial page that we as nonprofits use to tell our overall story. Um, and it's an important piece of the story, uh, an important piece of that puzzle, but it's not necessarily the most important piece. And at GuideStar, we, we've come to really understand that uh, very fully and, and work really hard to help nonprofits tell their full and robust story. Um, there's a much more complex story about nonprofits than just their financials, and we really want to encourage and support nonprofits as they tell that that whole story. So, uh, since our launch in, of our first website in 1996, GuideStar has provided nonprofits with ways to update their information um, on on our database. And now, just as then, we have a goal of giving nonprofits a platform that they can tell their full story and enable them to move beyond just the 990 and to share their information about their mission, their programs, their leadership, their accomplishments, and also their needs. Um, 
and organizations can update this as often as they wish and uh, it provides more current information um, than just what's available on the 990, which as we all know, by the time it's uh, available to the public can be somewhat out of date. Um, so it's, um, as we'll hear today, not just a space where you can update it on GuideStar's website, but because of these great and robust partnerships that we have with folks like Foundit and Global Giving and, uh, and California Endowment and our other data partners, um, it goes from, from this one spot to hundreds of other data partners. Uh, and so we've gone through lots of changes um, over the years since 1996, but the goal has remained the same, um, and that's to help nonprofits be transparent with donors and beneficiaries and provide information um, in just one place. And so, um, so that's it in a nutshell. So, so far, um, historically, 100,000 nonprofits have provided information through this process. And um, currently, we have a tiered process, so you can um, provide information at the bronze, silver, or gold level, and 30,000 nonprofits are participating currently at that level. And also an exciting fact is that 85 of the top 100 branded nonprofits are participating in the um, profile update um, at this time. So that's organizations like the World Wildlife Federation and the Boys and Girls Clubs of America and the Humane Society, just to name a few. Um, so it's, it's really exciting to see that it has salience in the nonprofit community in, in all of these different ways. So I want to talk a bit about what it takes to fill out your profile and make it more robust. What do we ask? What is it that you're going to be filling out? Um, so as I mentioned, there's a couple of tiered levels. Um, so I'll start with bronze, which is the most basic information that you could provide. Um, <clears throat> that is information about your basic contact information, and then it's also your mission statement. Uh, we'd like to know some about your area served, and uh, when we say that, we mean the physical location keywords so that folks can find you more easily, information about your CEO, information about your board so that we can overall get a better understanding of your leadership and, and what that structure looks like and uh, better understand those folks, and then a list of your programs so that we can start getting an in-depth look at the, the organization that you are and the type of work that you do. <laughs> uh, next is the silver level. So we want to get a more up-to-date picture of your finances. Um, so this is, again, pushing beyond the 990, so audited financial uh, statement. And if you don't have that, then it will also take your, your fiscal year, um, some revenue sources, your expenses, your liabilities, and your assets. So some really clear, clean, basic uh, financial information that's up-to-date. Um, Next is the gold level. So in gold, you can think of this as articulating your theory of change. So if you've gone through that process, this is really copying and pasting all of that information that you've already written out um, into to this to, to make um, public. So it's your long-term goals, your strategies, talking about your core competencies and the indicators of how you know you've gotten there once you, you get there, and also progress in, in reaching your goals. Um, and then soon to come will be our platinum level. Uh, so this is really exciting. It's, it's just around the corner, and this will be quantitative programmatic metrics. So um, the number of whatever that you um, measure um, and the idea of this is that you can benchmark against yourself over time and that you can also benchmark against your peers. And at GuideStar, we like to say, no stories without numbers, no numbers without stories. And so there would always be a space for you to provide narrative and explain those metrics and to talk about uh, specifically how you define those and also how and why they've changed over time. So that's a nutshell version of, of how you get to gold and how you get to platinum and beyond. And so what happens once you put that information into the system? So this is what's exciting. There's 
a whole pipeline. Um, so the reason that we are so passionate about sharing nonprofit data and information is because it strengthens nonprofits. Um, uh, as a nonprofit ourselves, we are so passionate about the nonprofit sector. So GuideStar has 7 million annual visitors. We a reach, you know, over 220 websites and organizations with our data. That's 70,000, you know, nonprofit staff and foundations around the world. And so that is connecting your data and information directly to funders, to financial advisors, to individual donors, to volunteers, to people, to beneficiaries, to the folks who would use your services. Um, and so once we push your information and data through that pipeline, then you reap the benefits of possibly additional funding to folks who want to um, volunteer, to like-minded organizations to possibly better partnerships. Um, just we, we feel that information is the, the, the pipeline to, to start that whole ball rolling. And so we're really excited to, to start that process for you. And it's, um, it's been great to be able to, to help nonprofits to, um, as you'll hear more today, to have more streamlined funding and, and things like that. And as I've mentioned, uh, soon to come is our platinum level. So what is exciting about this is that organizations will soon be able to prove their impact more easily to donors, um, to make public their progress and uh, more clearly track that for, for themselves and also for potential donors and to benchmark against themselves over time. And another really exciting piece about this is the potential to squash the overhead myth. So we talk about this a lot at GuideStar, and that's the idea that the overhead ratio is um, – there's nothing wrong with the metric in and of itself. It's just that it's a rather simplistic metric that's been used as – um, a total metric to measure nonprofits overall. And when used with a ton of other things, it's great. But used as, as the one metric to measure nonprofits, it can be really dangerous. Um, and so we love it when nonprofits can share their impact and share their story with ton, tons of other data. And the platinum level will be one other great tool for nonprofits to be able to share their story in really concrete ways. And so having um, one full number that they can, can share with, them, with, with funders will be really strong, especially because this will share the true cost of their outcome. So this is the outcome, and we got there with however much overhead it took to get there. So it'll be really exciting. Um, and one other really exciting thing that I will share later is that we've been working really hard at crafting our profile tool so that folks can more easily enter their data. So we just want this to be the best process possible for you all and as clean and as easy as possible. So at the end of the presentation, I will give you guys a tour of our new and improved system that we'll be debuting uh, very soon. And so with that, I will pass it along to Dolores. Right. Well, thank you, Jasmine, and hello, everyone. I am excited that I see that there's 359 participants um, joining us today for this uh, wonderful presentation. Um, as Jenny mentioned earlier, my name is Dolores Estrada, and I'm the manager of grants administration here at the California Endowment. The California Endowment is a California-based private health care funder focusing on uh, improving the health status of all Californians. And it's a mighty mission because uh, California is rather large with 58 counties and growing. And so our job uh, to make them healthy, happy people um, is uh, 
a, a really a hard task, and every year um, we we have discovered that the benefits of having um, GuideStar as a partner in our grant making, but also as a a really great resource for helping leveraging uh, relationships and money uh, for the work that we want to do has been extremely beneficial. So the California Endowment has been for the last five years util utilizing GuideStar as a resource for our grant making because as you can see um, this past year we awarded uh, 2006 grants and contracts totaling 187 million dollars and you can't really get that kind of volume um, and not focus on due diligence and our due diligence is a uh, really comes from a lot from the program managers that are out on the field, um, but also a lot of it, the sort of the tax and legal compliance comes from our grantees, our applicants, and the information that they provide in GuideStar. It's all about transparency, um, but it's also about access to information uh, and utilizing um, paperless resources. Here at the endowment in 2010, we moved to completely paperless grant making. And while it sounds really great, it's very difficult to do unless you have the proper tools. And for us, that tool is GuideStar. Um, as um, Jenny mentioned, we at the endowment went from 120 days in terms of our grant review process to 55. And that would not be possible unless we had the resources uh, available to us and obviously great staff who, who do the work. Um, one of the things that we have done over the course of time um, has been to obviously put together online applications, but one of the really incredible benefits of going online is we now have GuideStar as a partner, and in order to get our grants processed, we require our applicants to p complete their GuideStar profile. Now, we don't dictate to our applicants which level of transparency they have to have, but in order for the endowment to review an application, the first step is to complete that GuideStar profile. And I cannot tell you how important this has been as we've been um, evolving in our place-based work. We have had large nonprofits and small nonprofits. And for each of them, the experience has been that they learn something new about what they need to know in order to maintain their tax-exempt status. But more importantly, um, it has been a good opportunity for them to say to other funders and for our colleagues who work uh, in philanthropy to say, you know, I'm working with this organization. I think they'd really be great, and here is, uh, here is their information. And we gather that information from GuideStar. Now, back to the application. So, uh, so last year we had 2,006 applications, and, um, and I have to tell you that if it wasn't for this requirement, it would be very hard to, to complete our due diligence. One of the really um, important processes, uh, obviously in being online and in being transparent, is uh, the value of our grant due diligence. And so the endowment utilizes GuideStar for three very important things. The first one is to verify at different points in time the tax-exempt status of a nonprofit. So we check when the application comes in, we check when it's going through the review process, and we check when we're making payments. This is obviously all you know, requirements that uh, have helped us a lot, but also are important for uh, the grantees and applicants because if something is not right and something has gone wrong, uh, this is the first time that they hear uh, about it is when we're doing these reviews. The other thing that we do that's very critical in our grant review process is that we utilize the information that is in the GuideStar profile to evaluate the financial health of the nonprofit. We are very aware that depending on the nonprofit size, 
that is the that is where we have to put our lens, and we do our best to uh, make sure that we're right sizing the grants but also that we're also building capacity and sustainability. And that's why we have a very evolved uh, financial health review. And then the last and most important part of our review uh, is around conflict of interest. So we look at the board lists that are posted on the GuideStar profiles. And because we have such a a uh, high degree of transparency in everything we do, we really do um, appreciate when our applicants and grantees update that information to let us know if there's going to be a conflict with any request. Uh, we never we never don't process a request because there might be a conflict, but it at least gives us an indication of the of the review process that we have to take in order to make that grant happen. And then there's the incredible work that goes into a review, but then there's the benefits for the funders. So this is the selfish part of my presentation where I let you know that if it wasn't for uh, a lot of the information that you as grantees uh, and applicants put into GuideStar, uh, we would really be struggling with how to handle saving storage on our database. GuideStar serves as a, as a third-party repository of data for us. It is a reliable place to go to, um, and it helps us in terms of our ability to leverage our knowledge of grantees with other funders, and that has happened. It happens a lot, especially with the place-based work that we're doing. It has been a really great opportunity to just point to another funder and say, hey, you might be interested in this organization. We also use it to benchmark nonprofits. Obviously, we're uh, we're focusing on place-based uh, work uh, over the next 10 years, and one of the things that we've done is we've benchmarked sort of the sizes and types of um, nonprofits that are in the places that we're currently uh, located in, and obviously. The best and most important piece is really that we want to encourage field transparency. So the endowment doesn't only make the completion of the GuideStar requirement um, something that uh, we ask our applicants, but we model what we uh, ask our, our, our community partners to do. And so our profile is up there as well. I don't know that we're quite platinum bronzish yet, but um, we do our very best uh, to make sure that uh, we're modeling what we ask our, our community friends to do. And then um, lastly, um, I also want to share some other uses uh, that uh, we as a private funder use GuideStar for. One of the really important ones is uh, drawing comparisons of local nonprofits use, using financial scan. And for us, that's important because it helps us again with the question of leveraging other funder dollars, leveraging resources, um, building capacity, and also building sustainability. And moving in the not so near future, um, we will be utilizing the diversity data collection program that GuideStar offers as another piece of our application requirement. So again, you know, as a funder, we, we are very excited that uh, we have a tool like GuideStar to uh, point to our grantees and applicants to go to, to share their information, help with field transparency, help with um, information that I think across the board, uh, you know, data sharing I think is a very important part of philanthropy's work now. It's a good way to help support our communities, but also uh, not repeating the wheel of asking a, um, a nonprofit to send a hard copy of a 990. Uh, you know, the, the dollars that you save by not making that copy and having it descended in the mail and, and send it to your funder, uh, I, I think is extremely beneficial. So with that, um, I also want to leave all of you with a couple of really great resources that uh, we ourselves at the endowment utilize, but are also really good opportunities for um, all nonprofits to really look at. The first one is a 990 white paper that's on the GuideStar website, and the other one is the uh, Guide to Compensation, which is also, it's a good read, but it's also very informative uh, if you're a nonprofit. And with that, uh, I thank you for 
uh, letting me talk, and I am going to now pass on the baton to, oops, Linda. Thank you, Dolores. I'm very pleased to be here. As uh, Jenny mentioned, uh, I'm Linda Oatley. I lead the Partner Services team here at Global Giving Foundation. And I just want to share with you some information about Global Giving, uh, who we are and what we do, talk to you a little bit about how we use the GuideStar data uh, and the importance of updated partner profiles, and then I'll say a little bit about how nonprofits can join Global Giving. So what is Global Giving? We are an online crowdfunding platform community that connects nonprofit organizations with a vast network of individual and corporate supporters around the world. We started in 2002, well before crowdfunding was a thing, uh, by two former World Bank executives, Mari Karashi and Dennis Whittle. They had created the World Bank Development Marketplace, and I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with it, but it's uh, a competitive grant program that funds innovative projects that show high promise for development impact. And that program has been enormously successful over the years, and it has really um, showed us the enormous potential for a global marketplace for philanthropy. So Global Giving was launched, and we had one simple goal, uh, find organizations best positioned to solve problems in their community and to help increase their impact. Our funding platform allows anyone in the world to give to projects they might not have previously known about, and our feedback tools help nonprofits access the training and support they need to improve their fundraising and overall effectiveness. And we've done pretty well. Since 2002, uh, we've raised $185 million from 450,000 donors, supporting 12,000 projects in more than 160 countries. So how do we ensure that all of the organizations that are featured on our site are who they say they are and do what they say they do? So every organization that we work with goes through a comprehensive due diligence process before they're able to raise funds on the platform. We ask organizations to complete an online application um, and provide documentation with regard to their legal charitable status, their organization structure, financials, programs being implemented, and we ask about their staff and board. Um, our vetting also includes negative and positive news uh, analysis, community feedback search, and information on uh, the history of the founder. So in short, we, we go to great lengths uh, to ensure that every organization meets our standards for trustworthiness, quality, and impact. So when we're vetting U.S. organizations specifically, we rely pretty heavily on the GuideStar data to, um, because it is, it is comprehensive, reliable data. Um, every organization has a history, and good data is essential for us to be able to understand just the complete picture of an organization. Um, GuideStar allows us to view multiple years of uh, financial history. Oftentimes, we'll dive into the profiles and we'll go back further than what we've required from the organization. If, they, if we ask for two years of financial history and we have questions about that organization, we're able to go to their profile and sometimes access, you know, five and six years uh, in the past. We are also able to validate, of course, um, their EINs and to know if the organization is uh, Pub78 verified or not. Uh, you'd be surprised how many organizations change their name. And in most cases, GuideStar can instantly confirm for us that the organization's name change was filed appropriately with the IRS and approved. And this greatly reduces the need for us to go back and forth with the applicant to ensure that the name was legally changed. Uh, we've also found it very helpful in cases when an organization provides an EIN 
that is for a different organization. Uh, in the past, we've had to reach out to both of the organizations and request documentation and map out the relationship between the two. Um, but GuideStar confirms which organizations are approved under a specific umbrella EIN or group exemption. Uh, and this, as you can imagine, saves us a lot of time. Um, it also saves the applicant a lot of time. So last year, we integrated GuideStar's API into our online application. Uh, so now when organizations uh, go to submit an application, they type, it, they type in their EIN, and the application will automatically uh, pre-populate with the organization's basic information, uh, as well as all the required financial documents and program materials, uh, such as their annual reports. Uh, often we found that the person completing the application is, is not someone who has easy access to IRS determination letters and 990s, and so uh, this feature saves them quite a bit of time uh, and helps remove any potential barriers that they might encounter to submitting that application. Uh, for us, of course, having this information instantly embedded in the application uh, makes it so much easier and faster for us to be able to review. Uh, we always like to see complete GuideStar profiles, uh, and when there are gaps in the information, this can sometimes raise questions for us uh, and generally leads to delays in processing the application. So I want to share a little bit about how uh, nonprofits can join Global Giving. Uh, we ask all of the organizations who are interested in raising funds on our platform to first submit an application, uh, and you'll see the, the web link on the slide deck there. Uh, then we ask them to post a project, and then of course participate in something that we call an open challenge. We host four open challenges a year, and, and this is a great opportunity for nonprofits to really see if global giving is right for them. Um, all of the organizations, their challenge, the challenge part of it is that they raise at least $5,000 from 40 unique donors in a two-week period. Uh, we provide lots of tools and training to help organizations engage their supporters. Uh, we offer bonus prizes and matching donations as well throughout the campaign. Uh, organizations that participate in these challenges are generally made up of 50% domestic registered organizations and 50% international registered organizations. Uh, and they do range from the large cross-border groups to very small local community efforts. Um, our June challenge that we just completed had 219 participants that raised $541,000. Um, so the next challenge that we have is going to start September 1st, and I just wanted to let everyone know that the deadline is July 24th to submit an application, and I hope that you will consider participating. So I'm happy to answer any questions at the end of the webinar. Um, feel free to contact me at my email there if, uh, if something comes up um, later. But thank you again for the opportunity to um, speak with you today, and I will pass, um, pass the baton over to Darren. Okay, thanks, Linda. Go ahead and get turned on here. Okay, and I look forward to uh, walking through a demonstration here, spending the next five or ten minutes showing all of you in the audience how all of this great transparency data that we've been talking about uh, is made easily accessible to you as well as the funders that you work with uh, through the software applications that we provide. So, uh, but first, a little background on Foundant. Uh, we are headquartered in Bozeman, Montana. Very proud of the fact that we can be in a place like Bozeman, Montana. It's one of the benefits of where we are technology-wise, where you don't have to be in the Silicon Valley to start a software company anymore. Um, we have 40 total employees on our team, and all of us uh, are solely focused on providing grants management software. Uh, so we provide software to solutions uh, or software solutions to help both grant makers and grant seekers with their with their 
uh, activities associated with uh, the granting. So our first product that I'll, I'll be demonstrating to you in just a moment is called Grant Lifecycle Manager. That's a product that's been on the market for uh, quite a while now. It was released in 2007, and it is a product that's used by grant-making organizations. We currently have 815 uh, grant-making organizations that use our software. majority of those are here in the United States, um, quite a contingency in Canada um, as well. And... Uh, over the last 12 months, uh, over 170,000 grant applications have been submitted cumulatively to those 800 or so clients. Uh, so over the last eight or 10 years, we've uh, gained a ton of experience in what it's like uh, to be a grant-seeking organization submitting online grant applications. And uh, you know, even though it is the grant makers that buy this software from us, you as grant seekers uh, are our biggest user base. And so hopefully most of you have uh, had a chance to use our software um, as a grant seeker, um, and hopefully that experience has been good. Uh, if you do have, it, have had any issues, have suggestions on things we can do to make your life easier, you know, feel free to contact me directly again, making our software easy to use for the nonprofits that are submitting proposals uh, is really critical to us. Um, our newer product that we've just recently released is a product called Grant Hub, and that, again, is an area where we've taken all of that knowledge that we've gleaned over the last eight years of working with so many uh, grant-seeking uh, organizations in the grant application process and released a product called Grant Hub that helps nonprofits uh, manage their grant-seeking activity. Um, it's been on the market for a couple months. We currently have 14, actually it's 15. Uh, I saw that somebody just purchased this morning uh, nonprofits that are using um, Grant Hub to manage their activity. And again, I'll be showing you uh, some pieces of Grant Hub in just a minute. minute. Uh, specifically around how this transparency data uh, is made available as a tool uh, within the software. So as I jump into the demo, um, I'm going to be showing you a few different things here. So we're going to be showing you uh, integrations with all these data sources uh, directly into both Grant Lifecycle Manager and um, uh, Grant Hub be focusing on, obviously, uh, the great data that's available from GuideStar, but also showing you there are a lot of other uh, great data sources out there, uh, particularly Foundation Center and great nonprofits are a couple of other integrations that we have. And then talking a little bit about uh, you know, how we're committed to um, supporting the Simplify initiative to make the grant application process even easier for everybody that's involved. So with that little bit of background, let me go ahead and, and flip over to the software demonstration. You guys all should see uh, my screen popping up now. Uh, and you're seeing a, a view uh, into Grant Lifecycle Manager. And kind of the, the scenario here is that I'm a grants manager at the Caroline Foundation. And the Caroline Foundation is actually one of our clients in Minneapolis. Um, we have permission to use their logo, but rest assured this isn't their data, so I'm not showing anything uh, there. Uh, but our first scenario that I wanted to demonstrate is, uh, again, if I'm wearing my hat as a grants manager, here on this dashboard is I, where I see all the activity that's going on with the, the grants that we have uh, taking place right now. So I can see the letters of inquiry that have been submitted, uh, people that are working on applications, grant applications that have been submitted. Uh, down here in the follow-ups area is where they're keeping track of whether or not you're submitting your grant reports on time. So uh, nonprofits can rest assured that the grant makers are paying attention to your grant reports. Um, but if I go into the submitted area, and uh, let's say I want to check out, see who submitted grant applications, um, and I can see here that two grant applications have been submitted. One's come in from the American Red Cross, another from the Central Asia Institute. So maybe I want to review this grant application that's come in from the Central Asia Institute. I'll go ahead and click on the review icon. That takes me in to the submitted grant application. Uh, I can see the full application here where you have responded and filled in things like the date your fiscal year begins and your uh, uh, anticipated income, those type of things. But before I really dig into those details, one of the things I might want to do is just check out your public profile. So as I'm considering whether or not I want to make a grant to your organization, this public profile data is available to me as a funder. And I can learn a lot about 
um, you as a nonprofit before I even read your grant application just by consuming and looking through all of this public data. So the first tab in here is uh, a display of the GuideStar public profile. So I can see for Central Asia Institute, they are a gold member and they've filled out a complete, a fairly com complete profile. So, um, you know, some basic contact information in the first tab, but then I start, as I start expanding things, I can see there's a lot more. So they haven't filled in a lot of these fields, which, you know, would be things that would help get them to the platinum level. <laughs> but done a great job of, of providing their financial statements. So I can see their last several annual reports, audited financials, et cetera. Uh, additional organization details, uh, really great job of sharing all their social media uh, links. So I can easily find this organization on social media and see what that discussion is like. Um, board members list, and then even information on their specific programs. So uh, as a gold participant, you can see that um, the funder, Caroline Foundation, can really learn a ton about you as a nonprofit. Other public information that's available here uh, is the GuideStar charity check report on you as a nonprofit, so they can confirm that you are in good standing with the IRS. They can view all of your 990s uh, that are available from Foundation Center. Um, these just uh, as Foundation Center gets these 990s from the IRS, they make them available. But the GuideStar 990s are the ones that you as nonprofits have updated. So this is your chance to make sure that your latest and greatest uh, 990 is out here and available for the world to see uh, because these, this list of 990s um, is coming with quite a bit of lag time because it's coming from the IRS. Um, another tab that's available, and again, in terms of that public profile, is data from great nonprofits. And hopefully many of you are available, or uh, excuse me, familiar with great nonprofits. They're kind of the Yelp or the TripAdvisor of the nonprofit world. And uh, this is all data that shows um, reviews that have been written by users uh, in the community about this particular organization. And Central Asia Institute is an organization that had some controversy in the past, so as you'd uh, anticipate, there are some negative reviews. There are some very positive reviews in here, and, and I don't think any of the funders, our, our clients, are making um, you know, funding decisions based on these community reviews, but it does help them get a picture for what the community thinks of you. So you might want to be very familiar with your reviews. And then finally, um, as a funder, I can see the list of other organizations that are funding you. Um, again, this is data that's coming in from the Foundation Center. So uh, you know, point I wanted to make here is even before the Carolyn Foundation really gets into uh, digging into the grant application that you've provided, in that public profile, they really can learn a lot about you. And the more data that you're proactively providing there uh, is just going to help them get a much better picture for your organization uh, as they then come down and start reading your grant application and digging a little deeper. Uh, just a note uh, on the grant application itself, um, as uh, the folks from Global Giving mentioned, they're actually consuming data directly from GuideStar into the um, grant application, and I give them great kudos for that. So that is an initiative that we are also absolutely uh, committed to supporting. You may have heard of, heard of that uh, described as the Simplify initiative, uh, and that is on our roadmap to complete. So what we will, uh, by the end of the year, be able to do is our clients will be able to come in here and do things like uh, code some of these questions on their online application things like annual expenditures, annual income, uh, budgets, board of directors list, mission statement, and um, choose to allow you to populate fields like this directly from your exchange profile or your, your public profile uh, without you having to even type it in. So very excited to support that initiative uh, from GuideStar. Um, again, real, just real quickly, another way that our clients use uh, the GuideStar transparency data is just through a, a little more generic search. Uh, so here, um, you know, let's say I'm, I'm a program staff at the Carolyn Foundation. I just you know, was uh, having coffee with somebody and I learned about a nonprofit in the community. Don't know much about them, but I want to dig a little deeper. So I can come here type in the name or the EIN of that um, nonprofit, 
do a search for them. I'm going to pull back from GuideStar all of the um, organizations that meet that search criteria, quickly see a very uh, brief uh, profile of that organization, but then again the more detailed public profile is made available to the funder here where they can uh, do some research on the organization, even though this organization has not directly submitted a grant application to the Carolyn Foundation. So you'll see here uh, this particular nonprofit is Silver, and as I start to expand these tabs, there's quite a bit less data uh, available to me here. So if I want to dig a little deeper into this organization, uh, I'm going to have to, you know, contact them directly, maybe solicit a grant application, you know, do some other things uh, because this, you know, public facing profile isn't quite as uh, thorough. Um, real quickly, just want to also show how this transparency data can be made available to you as uh, grant seekers in our new Grant Hub product to make your life a little bit easier. So Grant Hub helps nonprofits keep track of their uh, deadlines, funding opportunities, questions and answers that you use as you're filling in application forms, those type of things. One of the things that we do for, for nonprofits right off the bat uh, is just provide you some tools to help remind you to keep your GuideStar profile up to date. So right in Grant Hub, I can go see profile for my organization, and here's where we're restating um, all of the information from your public profile and kind of giving you some reminders of that this is what the public is seeing, and that way you can make a choice to log in uh, to GuideStar with your credentials, make those changes uh, so that the public is maybe getting a more current uh, view of you than you see. Also, uh, in the resources area, um, cool integration here that um, uh, allows you to uh, do some searching and, and use this public data for your benefit. So here, if I, um, maybe I am an organization in, in town that's kind of similar to that Eagle Mount that I just demonstrated um, a, a minute ago on the funder side. So I want to learn a little bit more about them because they might have, we might have some things in common. So I'm going to put their name in here, say who funds them. Again, it's going to give me the list of everybody that matches my search criteria. I can view their GuideStar profile to make sure that, yep, this is uh, the Eagle Mount that I was thinking of. And then if I click on the link here, it's going to pull back a list, uh, and in this case is using Foundation Center data, of all of the other organizations that fund this particular nonprofit. Um, so here, maybe this is a, a, a foundation that I've never worked with before, so I could now import them as a funder into my database, um, go search for them in my funders list, pull open the Gilhausen Family Foundation, do things like view their 990 forms and access their Guide Star profile as a funder because there are uh, more and more funders that are actually filling out Guide Star profiles as well. So that, those are a few of the ways that you know we're committed to making uh, this transparency data you know easily accessible and kind of at the fingertips of the appropriate people at the right time because uh, I think. You know, the more that we can make this, this data easily available, the more valuable it is to everybody, uh, and that's something we're very committed to at Foundit. So uh, with that, I'll go ahead and wrap up my portion of the presentation and uh, go ahead and turn the ball back over to Jasmine. And uh, thanks, everybody, for uh, taking the time to hear my story. Hi, all. Um, so, as promised, I wanted to walk you all through our new and improved and soon to be released profile update forms. So, we've been working hard at making these a lot more streamlined, just a lot more clean and clear um, for folks to use. So I'm not sure how many of you have used our old uh, profile update forms, uh, but if you have, you'll notice a market difference. And if you haven't, then welcome. Uh, so the I'll, I'll just take you down this page and then on to another. 
So the first thing that you'll notice is right up top, we've got a nice big publish changes button. So one thing that we really pride ourselves on is really listening to our audience and making sure that we check in a lot with our users. So one thing that we heard over and over again is that sometimes it's hard for folks to know whether or not their changes have been published. Um, save and publish were getting a little mingled. So we made sure to really pull those sections apart and to make sure that any time there were unpublished changes that folks could read that loud and clear and to know when that was happening. Um, the next thing that you'll see is this progress bar. So we always want you to be striving for excellence in your, your profile. We really believe in having the most transparency possible, the most information possible, and we want it to be clear when you're on your way. So we've got this great progress bar that shows you how far you are to each, pro to each uh, profile level. So you can see here that this person has completed 100% of the bronze level and so forth. And there's also really easy navigation tags tabs to get to each of these. Um, another thing is that you can preview your profile. As soon as you press save, uh, you can see what it will look like before you hit publish. So if you make a little change and you want to know what that's going to look like to the public on your profile page that, that the world sees, you can see view that in real time, which is really important. Um, a couple other things that we've done are just Anywhere that it's possible, we've made it really easy to make quick inline edits just using this little button here. Um, we want to know more about your organization. So anywhere that we can, we've asked you to talk about the type of work that you do, name you know, the, the types of work that you do, the area that you focus on, things like that. Um, but also notice throughout that we've just worked on making this a lot more conversational and, and broken it out into the pages that you use the most. So here's a great example. This section is specifically for updating your Amazon Smile. So, okay, page cannot be updated. Oh, let me just connect here. I love that so we wouldn't be bothered by my chat screen, but... That also is how you get in. Um, so excuse me just for a second, but I'll just keep talking while this is loading. Um, so Amazon Smile, for folks who don't know, is a really great way to have a nice passive income screen, uh, and, excuse me, uh, in, income stream. So uh, the way that it works is that folks can sign up to have a portion of their um, purchases always go to your organization. So anytime they make a purchase, it can always go to your organization. Um, and so all that you have to do is fill out a couple of fields to make sure that it's always going to the right organization. And so here we've just got all of the fields that you would need to make sure are updated. Uh, and so we've done a couple of things just to make sure that all of our fields are nice and clean and clear for you to use. So one is just to make sure that all of these are collapsible so that you can see the whole thing really clear and easy, if that was important to you. Um, we've also really outlined what's optional and what's not. Um, another thing that you'll notice is that throughout, we've made sure that this form is as clear and as easy to read as possible. So where possible, it's really conversational. So who's the primary person uh, that the public should contact for your organization, as opposed to being, you know, just a really quick, glib sentence um, that might be harder to, to fill in the blanks for, right? Um, and so you'll just notice that kind of thing throughout. So mission statement and area serves, what's your organization's mission, what do you – and so – the counter is a lot more clear. All of these pieces are just really clean and clear, and then how you continue forward is really clear. Here it says continue to bronze because that's, that's the next logical um, place forward. And so I won't walk you through this, this whole step, but um, what I think is so great about this whole thing is just that we've paid a lot of attention to, and also you can see that you, there's a constant live chat. 
Um, we've paid a lot of attention to how people are most comfortable with filling in, with filling in forms, and made sure that that it's always as clear and as easy as possible to use. So we really want to encourage you guys. This should be um, live in the next few weeks, and so please come visit and. Um, yeah, we really want to encourage you guys to get to gold and beyond um, soon, and you know, feel free to ask questions. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen now um, and pass it over to Jenny and, and open the rest up for questions. Yep. Thanks so much, Jasmine, and um, thank you, every all the presenters on the phone as well. We're running a little bit short on time for questions, so um, I apologize that we won't get to most of them, but we will disperse them out to the panelists, and they will be following up with you, or a lot of them have put up their personal contact information, so please feel free to um, reach out once you get those slides in a couple of days. Um, Jasmine, a question for you. We've been talking about all um, this great data that you can enter at GuideStar. If someone is new to the organization or there's been some turnover, is there an easy way that they can go to access this information so that they can update it? That's a great question. So the easiest way is to go to the GuideStar homepage and click on Update Profile, and they should be able to click um, Claim claim profile or update profile and just enter their EIN and get approval within 24 hours. Um, and then they should be up and running and be able to edit their profile. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, and we have time for, for maybe one more question here. Um, Somebody asked that somebody mentioned that they are new to the nonprofit world that we've been talking about today. Um, what would you suggest would be the first jump into understanding the nonprofit sector um, and getting their information out there in ways like GuideStar? And we can open this up to everyone. Um, so I've got a couple of great suggestions um, for getting your information out. I think. One, I, I think that GuideStar really is a, a great one-stop place because we have so many great data partners, um, and it, it goes out to, uh, you know, over 100 um, organizations. Um, I think as far as taking in information and learning, uh, we have a great section called GuideStar Take Action, which will give you a lot of information um, just from tons of other partners, such as um, Root Cause and GiveWell which will go in-depth in lots of different cause areas. Um, I also think Foundation Center is just a really wonderful resource for learning a ton about the, the nonprofit space overall and through the lens of giving. But do, do other folks have resources for either taking in or putting out information? people on the spot. Um, Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no problem. Um, okay, wonderful. Well, I think um, we're going to get everybody on to the rest of their days. Um, many, many thanks to our wonderful presenters today. Um, you guys took the time to do this for us and really appreciate it. Same to everyone on the phone. Thanks so much for coming and learning today. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to email us at webinars at guidestar.org. Um, and finally, keep an eye out for the email coming soon with a copy of the slides and the recording from today's presentation. Thank you much. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.